and I'm going to go with, you know, 10 that are opposing this. You know, it's not, you know, we can't be repeating ourselves, ladies and gentlemen, you know. If there's anything different, then let's, let's state it, you know. But if it's just, I oppose it, I oppose it, you know, that's... So um, with that, you know, of course, um, if there's other individuals that um, are in support of it, I do want to hear that too. Good morning. And uh, these types of legal hearings regarding the public, it's advisable to use the batter shell process, especially if there's any contention of possible future litigation. Uh, I recommend you take a look at that as a possible way of uh, making sure the county is the ultimate coverage for uh, vulnerability. I'd also like to address the fact that uh, the chairman stated that uh, multiple opinions by multiple people might be something disallowed in a public hearing in Apache County. Um, prior restraint, which is when the government tries to re restrain speech before it is spoken, as opposed to punishing it afterwards, must clearly define what's illegal, cover the minimum speech necessary, make a quick decision, and be backed up by a court. Uh, as far as I'm aware, uh, the 10th District was the last to make a statement regarding public speech in public hearings, and sure. their, their decision was that... Sure. Yeah, Mr. Shirley. I don't see what this has anything to do with this. This is a public We're hearing, and I'm speaking about law under wish. public hearings. I believe this is, uh, you know, this is not pertaining to the uh, community development that I'm hearing. This is about public. limitation, possible limitation to exercise of prior restraint on those people wishing to speak today, sir. If you continue to talk, then I'm, I'm not going to allow that, Charles. 